Hey everyone. So, two of my favorite scientists made videos recently to answer questions about homosexuality from an evolutionary standpoint. And at first I found that the answers were kind of cryptic and that they didn't answer the question so people could really understand what it was these two were talking about. The two being Bill Nye and Professor Richard Dawkins. And then I thought about it and realized it's not their answers that are the problem. It's the questions. The first question, which was posed to Richard Dawkins, was, For things such as homosexuality, which people who argue against evolution ceaselessly insist, there appears to be no linear Darwinian reason to possess this trait. And the second posed to Bill Nye was, If the purpose of a species is to reproduce and survive, how would it make sense evolutionarily for humans to have same-sex preferences? Are humans the only animals that practice homosexuality? Is so, does this mean that homosexuality is the product of a human's personal whim, as opposed to instinct? Both of the questions imply in themselves that the person who asked may or may not understand and accept evolution, but that simple factors in the evolutionary model are escaping them. Which is why the answers that Nye and Dawkins gave didn't seem to hit the spot with thousands of commenters on the videos. So, I'm going to be bold and answer it the way I would, even though I hold both of them in high esteem and I'll try to order my answers so that they support each other. First, evolution is something that happens to a population, not an individual. It is, simply put, a change in allele frequencies in a population over successive generations. I know that's just science gobbledygook, but let me put it this way. If you have a population of individuals that procreate on a regular basis and accrue many changes over time, then suddenly you have one individual, either straight or gay, that does not procreate, this does not prevent evolution from happening. The alleles will still be passed on by others who do procreate. In fact, the loss of alleles will change the frequency. Second, evolution is not goal-oriented. There's no ultimate outcome that's being driven by evolution to make perfect populations. Evolution is the outcome of a myriad of factors that are a part of the model. And one of those things is, number three, genetic death is a part of the model. Genetic death is the removal of an allele or genotype from a population. There are many people, straight or gay, who don't want to have children. This results in genetic death, meaning that their alleles don't get passed on, and that's the end of them. There isn't something wrong with a person who doesn't want to have children, and it's very much a part of the evolutionary model. People only state this because they think that evolution has this ultimate goal of always procreating in every instance of life. Which brings me to my fourth point. Gay people are not incapable of having children. Their sperm and eggs still work. The attraction factor is a problem, but it's not something that prevents a gay person from passing on their alleles. No, in fact, most gay people that I know do want children. It's predicated upon the idea that male homosexuals see vaginas and they go, ah, and then scream and then they run away. Like a vagina has teeth that will, like, rip their dick off or something. Case in point, yours truly. Not being attracted didn't prevent me from having children. You don't necessarily have to be attracted to a person to get an erection and sally forth. It, in fact, takes very little stimulation. Again, case in point, yours truly. And last, I'd like to point out that evolution runs on a cost-benefit analysis. While the likelihood of homosexuals appropriating is low, they obviously still do it. However, even if the 3-5% to of the population that are homosexuals didn't procreate, there are still billions of people having children. So evolution still goes on. So, if the cost is a small portion of the population not having children, and the benefit is millions of others still having them, guess what? It will still exist within the population. Thank you for watching. Oh, before I go, uh, I wanted to give a little shout out to a friend. You guys might know him. He's the one with the weird green brain as an icon. He actually thinks that he's a Ganatosthome, or something silly like that. His name is Microbloganism, and I would love it if you all subscribe to him. He's got a great channel where he debunks pseudoscience, and it's a lot of fun. Check him out.